Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. The plan is to build a workshop scene in the photo that encapsulates both mechanical and electrical engineering ideas. To achieve this, I'll add some equipment to the background to fill the space, including a 3D printer, a waveform generator, and an oscilloscope. As a focal point, I'll sit in the center and wear an Iron Man inspired arc reactor. But first, I need to make the arc reactor. Or well, the scrap reactor. Since I have a lot of random scrap material from taking things apart, I figured why not challenge myself to repurpose some of these materials rather than just 3D printing it. I salvage copper wire from filter coils and mini transformers of circuit boards I removed from an old TV and 2D printer. The LED lights were reused from an old 3D printer enclosure I had built previously. To create the copper coils, I wrapped the wire around function keys off of a broken keyboard. I used a plethora of plastic lids to make the base of the reactor, including a Pringles lid and one from a mini jar of Nutella. Oh, and the reflective films are from an anti-static digikey bag and the reflector slash diffuser sheets from a broken PC monitor. The centerpiece of the arc reactor came from an old fan cover and it kind of looks like a Sharon gun. Mom, get your sharing gun. By now I'm sure you've noticed this won't be a thematically accurate arc reactor. It has my own scrappy customized vibe. But this is kind of the setup we had going on. So in the photos, you'll see both of these were running. I had this generating a sine wave and this one reading it. And we had the Prusa back here with a little benchy on there. And then this little <laughs> Fisher Price chair holding the colored LED we had in the background for the backlight. A huge shout out to Nick who helped me take these profile pictures. He is on Instagram so feel free to check out the rest of his photography there. I would best describe his work as cinematic so if that might interest you feel free to give him a follow. Thanks Nick. With the profile pictures taken I now had a light up prop with really no other use so I fixed up the electronics, found a frame, and made it an art piece. For the curious, here is a breakdown of my electronics, which included an Arduino Nano, a switch, a 9 volt battery, and a strip of about 20-ish LEDs. To power the LED strips safely from the Arduino, I used a 470 ohm resistor and 1000 microfarad capacitor, and I followed this Adafruit tutorial to determine those values. Fun fact, according to the controller's specs, you can actually power the Arduino Nano with 7 to 12 volts from its V-in and ground pins. This is because the V-in pin goes directly to the input of the onboard 5 volt regulator. Dora here with an off-topic tangent. Also, sorry for the printer noises in the background. Have any of you ever tried extending an image using AI? Maybe you've heard of it as uncropping an image, but out of curiosity, I wanted to try and do that to some of the pictures we took, so that's exactly what I did. 
Uncropping or outpainting relies on deep learning algorithms that essentially analyze large data sets of images to identify patterns and generate new content. These algorithms use a variety of techniques, including CNNs and GANs, to learn the features and patterns that make up an image and then use this knowledge to generate new related visual content. The first tool I tried was the uncrop tool by ClipDrop. I think because it didn't let you input a prompt gave the weirdest results. For some reason, the photos I was inputting, ClipDrop's data set pulled out like musician, instrument, social setting at a bar because it kept on adding people playing instruments on the sides, confetti, there was like kind of like a bar scene, partying, maybe the bright lights in the photo was the theme it recognized. It also generated this Christmas themed one which I'm really confused. <laughs> Guess this is my next Christmas card. There was a few that were weird. One of the generated photos had a hooded feature sitting next to me with sewn lips and eyes shut. Here's another kind of creepy one that I saved. Like, what is that? Where did it come from? Then there was another one where it like generated a hand behind me and a few of them like extended my limbs so the photo like cut off a little bit of my hand. I was sitting crisscross applesauce and it like extended my limbs and they look like ghastly and like blurry and weird. The other platform I tried was Runway and luckily their AI uncropper had an option for a prompt so I could specify exactly what the patterns or themes I wanted in the photo to be. So I specified something like women in workshop with vintage electronics and 3D printer, Iron Man, etc. And these are some of the results that I got. I think they turned out a lot better definitely with more detail. Keep in mind that these are both the free versions, so the quality of the photo wasn't that great. It was pretty blurry when I tried to upscale it, so I can't really use it for anything other than like a profile photo. But if you're ever curious what a data set will recognize as a theme in your photo, you should try uncropping some of your pics. Even by the outpainted photos I've shown, you can see that there are still some limitations. Generating new content that matches the style or characteristics of the input photo demands for computational power in large data sets, which could be hard to get access to. Generated content can still be unpredictable and is not always contextually accurate, needing additional input from the user to get a result closer to what you want. As much as I find this topic interesting, I am by no means an AI expert. If my speculations aren't accurate, please let me know. I'd love to learn.